In this video, I'm going to go over with you the basics of pumping, how and when to start, and tips for better milk output during these pumping sessions. Hey, it's Morgan. Welcome to the Passable Parent Channel. I've been a pediatric nurse for the past 10 years specializing in early childhood development, and I'm also a mom. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And make sure to comment down below if you have any questions. I love to hear from all of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the basics of pumping. Mamas, if you've been breastfeeding, you know how convenient it can be not to have to deal with pumps and bottles and to just be able to quickly feed your baby whenever, wherever. But if you ever need to be away from your baby, whether it's planned or an unplanned emergent event, you will want to pump to have a freezer stash for your baby. Many of us also need to return to work or school, so pumping is a necessity. In this video, I'll be discussing some products I love to make pumping easier, and I'll link them all in the description box below for you, so be sure to check them out. First things first, you'll need a breast pump. You'll need to decide what pump is best for you. I use the Spectra S1 breast pump. I chose this pump and I really like this pump because it actually is a battery powered and rechargeable pump, which means that if you're returning to work, you don't have to constantly have it plugged in to an outlet. It is the same and works the same as the Spectra S2 pump. It's just that the Spectra S2 does not have the option to be plugged into an outlet. And if you're an expecting mama, make sure you don't buy a breast pump. You actually want to make sure to go through your insurance. Many insurance companies, I think mostly all of them, will pay for you to have your own breast pump. You may have to pay for upgrades such as one that is battery powered, but you should be covered through your insurance. When should you start pumping? This depends on your circumstances and it also depends on whether or not when your milk comes in, if you become engorged or have an oversupply. In this scenario, mamas might need to start pumping right away to avoid mastitis. If not, then you'll need to ask yourself if or when you do plan to return back to work or what you would do if needed to be away from your baby. Many certified lactation consultants recommend waiting two to three weeks before starting the pump since you're still trying to get the hang of breastfeeding and it can be overwhelming. The first three weeks are definitely the hardest, but you'll be wanting to start pumping before six weeks because this is usually when your milk regulates. So if you are trying to pump extra for a stash, waiting too long can actually make it much harder for you. You don't want your body to think it's producing enough milk because then you won't be able to nurse baby while easily building your stash. Remember, supply equals demand. So you have to trick your body into thinking it's not making enough milk for baby. Starting before that six week mark is going to be important to tell your body how much milk to make including those extra half ounce to three ounces you can store away to start your stash. Another way to collect your breast milk without using an electric pump is using the Haka. This will actually catch the letdown on the opposite breast that you are nursing baby off of. This is the Haka and this is the cap for the Haka, which I recommend getting the cap because you don't want to spill this. This is liquid gold. But the Haka, you just kind of pull it back. So you pull back this part of it like this create this sort of lip to it. And then you take it to your breast and it kind of just suctions over your nipple and it stays suctioned on and it catches any letdown or any milk coming out while your baby nurses off of the opposite breast. Your baby can only nurse off of one breast at a time, so attaching this little tool to your other breast is an awesome way to collect some extra milk. This company, Haka, also makes these ladybug silicone breast shells now that you can even wear in your bra instead of nursing pads to catch that extra breast milk. And you can wear them in your bra as you go about your day. And an added benefit is, especially in those beginning weeks, your nipples won't chafe up against your bra. This sort of creates a barrier and it also helps keep your nipple cream on so that way it's not rubbing off on your clothes. What time of day should I start pumping is a frequently asked question. Usually in the mornings, your breasts are the most full. So after that first full morning nursing session for baby, it's a great time to pump. Just make sure whenever you choose to pump, you have at least a full hour from when baby will want to nurse again. So that way your breasts have time to produce more milk to meet your baby's needs. 
You can pump in between nursing sessions throughout the day, but again, just be sure to give yourself time, at least one to two hours until your baby wants to nurse again. If you get into a situation where you are finished pumping or you just finished pumping and all of a sudden baby wants to nurse again, don't worry, your breasts are always producing milk. Put your baby to the breast and allow them to nurse to help stimulate further milk production. This is only going to help you build an even greater supply. If your baby is a bit older, maybe a few months old, and you're just starting to try pumping and building it into your routine, maybe at this point for some of you, your baby is even sleeping longer and a little bit longer of stretches at night, so it's not a bad idea to start pumping at night right before you go to bed. This helps prevent engorgement or that over full uncomfortable feeling of your breasts overnight as your baby starts sleeping in these longer stretches, and it's a great time to add to that freezer stash. My favorite times to recommend pumping to mamas is once in your morning hours after a full feeding and right before you go to bed for the night after a full feeding to build that stash. If you are a mama returning to work or going to be away from your baby, you normally want to be nursing your baby every two to four hours. So when you're away from your baby or at work, you want to get those pumping sessions in every two to four hours as well. Think about the times you normally would be feeding your baby and try to create a similar pumping schedule. This will not only help you keep building a stash, but will maintain your supply and tells your body to keep producing milk during these times. And remember, it's the law. You have a right to pump and your employer has to provide a safe space for you to be able to pump comfortably. It's also really helpful when at work or pumping away from your baby to look away from your pump and instead look at photos and videos of your baby. This is proven to help increase milk output. If you are exclusively breastfeeding your baby, which is nursing at the breast throughout the day and at night with no supplementation and also trying to add in pumping sessions, it's normal to get about half an ounce to two ounces total on both breasts for your pump sessions. If this is happening to you, mama, don't be discouraged. This is normal. And whether you are an exclusively breastfeeding mom or not, make sure to check out my video on increasing milk supply. It just takes time and remember, that if you are nursing your baby, your baby is actually much better at removing the milk from your breasts than an actual breast pump. It's important for pumping to be as comfortable as possible for you. The first thing you wanna make sure is that you're using the correct size breast flange. This is the breast flange. Everyone's might look a little bit different depending on the pump that you're using, but it's gonna look very similar to this. If it's too tight, it will actually pinch the nipple and the nipple won't be able to fully fit into the pump. It will be really uncomfortable and even painful. And if it's too big, it won't be as effective at taking the nipple into the pump and extracting milk. If you are unsure if your breast flange is sized appropriately for you, make sure to reach out to a lactation consultant or even your pediatrician might have some recommendations for a local lactation consultant and they can help you and make sure that your flange is appropriately fitting. The next thing is to make sure that you have the right settings when you are pumping at the right times. When I start pumping, I start on a lower setting in the stimulating rhythm, not on full suction. You have the best milk production and extraction when you are not stressed out or into pain or discomfort. I find it's better to gradually increase the suction level on the pump, periodically switch back to the lower level or change the rhythm. You want to start slow and work your way up to the strongest suction without pain. Start with a faster stimulating rhythm and after one to two minutes, switch over to the stronger, longer pools with increased suction. This mimics exactly how your baby starts and works their way up during a nursing session at the breast. This is the rhythm that I start with. As you can hear it, it's quicker. This is the highest level suction and you can hear the longer pulls. Versus at beginning setting, which is stimulating that letdown and it's more frequent, but it's less intensity in the suction. And this is where it's all the way up, suction's the highest, different rhythm. Another tip to help increase milk output during your pumping session is to use massage and compression. Gently in a circular motion, massage your breasts throughout the session and before starting to stimulate milk flow. Once you start letting down milk or you see the milk entering your bottles or collection bags, you can start compressing down in your breast almost like you would press down on a sandwich. 
keeping away from your areola so that you don't break your suction with the pump. If you're compressing correctly, you'll see a strong, more forceful spray of milk. Alternate between compressing and massaging to increase output throughout the session. Again, every mama is different. Breastfeeding moms, again, might get half an ounce to two ounces total per pumping session. This is normal. Some moms may get up to 10 ounces a session. This is more rare, but it does happen. Every woman is different, so try not to compare. Trust that your body is strong and capable and will produce the milk that it needs to for your baby. Try not to worry about what others may be producing or what you see on the internet. You should be so proud of yourself, despite the number on the bottle or the bag. And again, if you are concerned, check out my other video on tips to increase milk supply. Now that you have this wonderful pumped milk, let's talk about the basics of how to store it. If you keep the breast milk at room temperature, it must be given to baby within four hours. If you refrigerate your breast milk, it can be stored for up to four days. Frozen breast milk is good in the freezer for six months, and if you're using a deep freezer, then it's good for up to 12 months. If you thaw your breast milk from the freezer, baby needs to drink it within two hours of it reaching room temperature. If you let your frozen milk thaw in the fridge, it must be given to baby within 24 hours. When thawing your milk, never microwave it. Always thaw in warm water or let it thaw in the fridge. Always use the oldest milk first to the newest milk. Make sure to label, date, and time each bag of milk to keep track and always lay them flat to freeze. I love the breast milk storage bags by Lancinol because you can pump directly into them and they fit most breast pumps. I'll make sure to link them down below for you just like everything else I mentioned. Another recommendation I have is to freeze some bags in smaller batches. Think about two to three ounce batches and I would say freeze no more than five ounces in a bag. That way none will go to waste and you have options for how much to thaw at a time. If you are an exclusively or predominantly breastfeeding mom, meaning exclusively nursing at the breast, pumping is totally different from nursing. So if you get less milk pumping than you would expect to be getting from nursing, it's because nursing can be an emotional connection with your baby versus we really have no connection with a breast pump. If you're not used to breast pumping, this can make it much harder to get good milk output. If you are worried about this and the number of ounces, I wanna encourage you not to stress too much about it. Stress can actually decrease milk production. Instead, try to focus on the amazing thing you are doing, providing these nutrients for your baby, despite the number of ounces. This is a gift that only you can give your baby. I hope this video was helpful and informative and makes you feel more confident in your pumping and breastfeeding journey. Please like, subscribe, and turn notifications on so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you're interested, I made this shirt to empower breastfeeding moms, pumping moms, breastfeeding moms, exclusively nursing moms, and moms who do a combination. So feel free to check it out. You can find it at www.passableparent.com. And I have a picture of it right here. And feel free to comment down below any questions you have or topics you'd like to see me cover in future videos. Thank you so much for your time today and for your support. I hope to see you in the next video.